Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to show you how to best secure your iPhone. And there's been a lot of talk about security around phones these days, and so I thought I'd take the time to show you the different options you have within iOS and different things you can do. Now, if you have an iPhone 5S or newer, you have access to Touch ID, and some iPads have it as well. And this is a really convenient way to have a long password, which is secure, but not have to enter it every time. The exceptions to this is if you have your phone turned off, the next time you boot it up, you'll have to put in your password before you use Touch ID. You also have to put in your password if you haven't unlocked your phone or device for 48 hours. That's just a security precaution that's built in. Now, right now I have a simple password set up. Now, because I've rebooted this, I can just simply use Touch ID. If you haven't seen that, it works really well and really quick. But most have seen that, and if I go ahead and unlock the phone, I have a simple password set up, and a four-digit password, and this is all that Apple originally had, and everyone should at least have a four-digit password or better. So right now I just set it to 1234 for this video, and that's not very secure. So we have a couple different options. We go to Settings, and under Settings we go to Touch ID and Passcode, and under Touch ID and Passcode, it first makes you enter your password. So you wanna go ahead and do that. And here is where all of your information and options are stored. So right now you can use Touch ID for iPhone Unlock, Apple Pay, iTunes, and App Store. And I use it for all of those things because it's very secure and very safe. Touch ID actually registers to a chip on the phone and that data is, in, is encrypted and only accessible in that chip. Once you reset the phone, it goes away and you can't get it any other way. So it's, it's a really nice feature that's built in and I use it for that reason. And I have actually five different fingerprints attached to it. However, if you don't want to use that, just simply turn it off and you'll be able to enter your phone with a password every time. Now, if you go down here, you can change your passcode and you can tell it how often to require it. So if your phone screen goes out, if you have it set to time out and dim the screen and shut off, it'll require a passcode immediately. However, we need to first change that passcode to a better than four digit passcode. So we can go ahead and hit change passcode, put in our current passcode. Once we're at the next screen, we have an option to put in a six digit passcode. Now this is fairly secure and we can just use a six digit pin code, but what's even better is if we hit passcode options and then we use a custom alphanumeric code and this can be anything we want. So we could say right here, we've got the keyboard now and we could just do Zolotech and we could put a bunch of numbers after it or whatever we want, hit next. and hit done. Now the passcode is Zolotech and it asks me a couple things. Do I wanna use this for iCloud security? I'll use the same code and then it wants me to put in my iCloud ID. Once the iCloud password has been entered, you're good to go and you can just use that long password. So if I shut off the phone, turn it back on, not using Touch ID, now I get the passcode down here at the bottom, the, the little keyboard, put in Zolotech and hit done. And now I'm back. So that's one way to make your phone more secure. You can make that password really long or really short. And that way it's much more difficult to actually get into the phone and change that or use this. Now we have one failed passcode attempt. Now, if you have a failed passcode attempt when you unlock your phone, you can actually set it to wipe the phone after a certain amount of set attempts. So that's usually 10 attempts and then it will erase data. So you can see that's this option all the way at the bottom under touch ID and passcode, erase data. So erase all data on this iPhone after 10 failed passcode attempts. Now, if I had this turned on, my phone would probably be erased a lot since my kids actually get a hold of this sometimes, try and guess my password and fail to log in. So I keep that off. It's off by default actually. So if you did want to secure it, you can simply turn it on. Now here we have a couple more options and these are things that show on your phone on your phone's home screen. And if you don't want these things on the home screen when it's locked, you might want to turn it off. Now a lot of people thought there was a problem when Siri was accessible from a locked home screen. It's not a problem, it's actually a feature. It's not a bug that Apple forgot to fix. It's actually something that's built in and put there on purpose. However, if you don't want it, just simply touch it off, touch this and turn it off. Once it's turned off, you won't see any of these things on the lock screen anymore. Again, you have voice dial as well, won't be available there. Music controls enabled all the time from the lock screen. 
Now that you have your passwords more secure and you know how to do that, one of the things you should know is that your actual phone is encrypted, but your iCloud backup is not encrypted. So what that means is if you were to directly try and access the information on the phone, it's encrypted and you would need basically a supercomputer and a lot of time to actually access and decrypt that information. But your iCloud backup that's actually turned on by default under your iCloud settings. So let's check that out. You just go down to iCloud. Now in iCloud down at the bottom, you have backup and it's turned on. Now because this is turned on, it's very convenient. It's an easy way to restore and backup your phone. I leave it on because I like to use it. However, this data is actually not encrypted on Apple's servers. So it's lying there on their servers, which are secured, but that information is actually available should someone really need to get it. So that particular information, if you don't want it there, you can turn off iCloud backup. However, that means you need to back up somewhere else, such as your computer uh, using iTunes, and you can have a local backup that way. I find this way much more convenient, so I use it that way, and I don't have anything that really is a problem backing up. Now, aside from the security on your phone with this, there are some other things you can actually do more securely, such as browsing the web. So if you're in Safari, we'll go ahead and open that up. And I have a bunch of different things open. If you want to surf the web securely, you can hit private. And what this does is it doesn't record any history of where you've gone or anything like that. So if you want to go to whatever site and you don't want anybody to know where you've been for whatever reason, you have that option. Now, if you need to clear that information for whatever reason, you can do that as well under settings. And that information is found under settings. Scroll down to Safari, scroll all the way to the bottom and hit clear history and website data. So I'll go ahead and do that. We'll hit clear history and data. And you have all these options too, as well. You can do not track. You can tell it to block cookies, all sorts of information that you can actually change and customize. But if you remember, I had all those tabs open. If I go back off of private, you'll see there's no more tabs open. It actually cleared all the information out and they're no longer there. Another way you can secure your phone has to do with your location data. Now location data can be very handy if you want to use maps or things like that. But what if you don't want anything else using it? Well, that's actually found again under your settings and under privacy. So under privacy, go to privacy, go to location services and under location services, you have all of your apps and if it allows you to use the location or not. So say I don't want Google Maps to use my location, I can tap here and I can tell it to never use my location, although that kind of defeats the purpose of maps. But you do have that option if you want it, and you can do that individually for everything, or you can just turn it off altogether. That's another way you can more securely use your phone. Most of these things I leave on because I find all these features really great to use. One of the other things you may want to consider turning off if you want a super secure phone really has to do with iCloud Keychain. Now, iCloud Keychain is incredibly convenient. It allows you to store your passcodes across multiple Apple devices securely, and you actually have to prove them from device to device. But what that means is if I go to a website that requires a password, whatever website might require it, I can go to that, put in the password, and then when I go to my Mac or my iPad or my iPod Touch, it will autofill that password again, and I'll have access to it. It's all, always usually a little dots, but you can access it if you need to. However, there's more secure solutions such as 1Password, LastPass, or Data Vault. So if you do want to turn off the actual keychain, you just go into Settings, you go down to your iCloud Settings again, scroll down, and you'll see there's Keychain. You can just go into it and turn it off. There are more security options under Advanced as well, but this is more so something I find more convenient than it is to not have it turned on. It's really up to you when it comes to that sort of security. The last point I'll mention has to do with just being smart about how you use your data. A lot of people don't really think when they're on their phones about how to keep things secure, but you really need to just relate it to everyday life. If you wouldn't give your credit card to a stranger, don't give your credit card to strange websites that you're not familiar with and that can't be trusted. Don't give your information to your phone, such as your credit card information, and store it here if you're handing your phone to people regularly for them to check it out. There's just a lot of common sense that's involved in everyday use of your phone. I would highly recommend you just check out the settings I went over earlier, see what works best for your everyday situation. In my case, I like to use Touch ID, I like the iCloud backups, and that's not a problem for me. But if it's a problem for you, 
just make sure that you have it set up how you need it set up. If you work in a secure place that really is very picky about how they have their phones managed, just make sure you're being as secure as you possibly can. If you have any other suggestions or comments or things I might have missed, let me know in the comments below. Share with everybody else here on the video as well. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.